Burdick, as, as you know, this is a, a long time coming. It's been almost 20 years since the offense date. Um, a long time coming for the family, a long time coming for the police department and all of the detectives that work so hard on this case. Uh, we are so appreciative for all of their work. How difficult was it to get to this point? Um, it's been a long road, and I mean, just with the Auburn State being in 94 and all the work that was done so many years ago, um, and then the work after the lead we got in 2010, we've worked on it for the last two years. So getting to this point and the work that the jury did this week, it's been a long road, but it was worth every minute. Talk a little bit about the work that was done in 94 to preserve the evidence that let us here. Well, as I talked about in trial, um, the, the integrity that the detectives used and collecting well, the evidence yes, back in 94, you know, made, made all the difference when um, they had the foresight to know that science would advance and someday they might get something off that evidence. And luckily we had all that. Um, and it had been collected in a way that it was usable, you know, almost 20 years later. Obviously you've had a discussion with the family. What is their response to The family is very pleased that their mother was treated with such respect and that everyone worked so hard on her behalf. Um, they specifically mentioned the detectives and the scientists and the jury um, in this particular case. Y'all got to get one statement from Aaron. <laughs> Ask him something. Uh, Aaron, okay. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about, uh, talk a little bit about your analogy of point A to point B. Well, we had a theory early on in the case that we knew um, that she was struck in the head, uh, Miss Ivy was struck in the head and that um, she had defensive wounds on her hand. And due to the, the blood evidence solely being on the top waistband of her, of her jeans, we knew that she was wearing those jeans when she was killed. Um, so the analogy that, that I argued in closing was we knew that we could link Carrie Williams to being there um, at the scene before she was killed and after she was killed. Uh, we knew that he was involved uh, due to the DNA under her fingernails. Uh, we knew that that would have been um, at the time frame uh, that she was struggling with Mr. Williams trying to protect herself. And we knew based on the blood evidence uh, on the genes that he was there um, after uh, she was killed um, because we have his DNA uh, when he removed the genes uh, after she was killed. So that only leaves that time frame in between the first contact and after she's dead and um, when the, the mortal blow to her chest was done. So. I was just trying to walk the jury through that, you know, from point A to point B. If we know he's there uh, before it happens and after it happens, he obviously had to be there when it happens.